This is the Motorola H60 Pro disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, we'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the back plate. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off, so you won't have to take apart the phone to replace those. There are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Looking at the top motherboard cover, we can see some antenna lines drawn which are the light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna, the LED flash, and the wireless charging coil. On the back, we can see a large area of graphite film top transfer heat. Once the graphite film has been peeled off, we can see an additional Phillips screw on the bottom that has to be removed. Now the battery cables can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. The cables for the main and telephoto lens need to be disconnected from the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel ultra wide and macro lens, a secondary microphone, as well as some copper film behind the front facing camera. The connectors for the cameras can be disconnected by just popping them off. Looking at the other side, we see the 50 megapixel front facing camera, as well as thermal paste and graphite film on the back shield to help transfer heat. Also, these pins on the motherboard make a connection with the contacts behind the proximity and ambient light sensor board. Now that the graphite film and copper tape have been peeled back, we see a thin copper plate on top of the processor, as well as some thermal paste on these chips, and a thermal pad on top of the RAM and this chip over here. Here's a better look with the copper plate and thermal pad removed. And here's a look at the copper heat plate. On to the battery. To remove the battery, there are no pull pouches or pull tabs provided to help you pry it off, so we will need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off.
and this is the 6000 mAh battery. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the top plastic cover and the cover itself, disconnect the battery cables and the screen cable, pry the battery off giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. There is also an antenna line drawn on this plastic cover. There are two additional Phillips screws which need to be removed. This is the charger port board, and we can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port. And this is the SIM reader or sub board. The primary microphone is located underneath this covered shield, and the SIM reader is located on the other side. This is the speaker assembly. The vibrator motor is located here which is held down with some adhesive. And the same goes for the fingerprint scanner located next to that. To replace those just apply some heat and gently pry them off. There is also a 5G antenna board on the bottom corner which the blue coaxial cable is connected to. There is a rubber gasket and mesh filter on the bottom speaker opening as well as over the microphone openings. So for this phone, if you're to accidentally insert your SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you wouldn't have to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes, so they wouldn't get damaged. Once the flex cable for the screen, and the flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard and charger port board, have been peeled back, we have a better look at the vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard and cameras. Talking about the cameras, this is the 50 megapixel primary camera and this is the 10 megapixel telephoto lens. Both have OIS or optical image stabilization. The flex cable over here is for the volume keys and power button. And one thing I don't like about this design, which Motorola tends to do sometimes, the flex cable is right up to an opening in the mid frame, so that means you'd actually have to pry the screen off as well to replace that flex cable for the buttons. And prying the screen off poses a high chance of damaging a working screen, so unless your screen is broken, it's not worth attempting to fix that. The same goes for the flex cable for the other button on the other side. Again, the proximity and ambient light sensor board is located here, and the top of your V speaker is located next to that, which is also held on with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything is back together, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.